Malware is increasingly targeting smartphones as hackers attempt to snoop on the sensitive data we keep on the devices, which all of us have on us at almost all times. But one form of mobile malware targeting Android users is particularly successful, mistakenly downloaded by millions of users and repeatedly returning to the Google Play Store despite repeated takedowns. I'm Danny Palmer, this is ZDNet Security Update. With me to discuss the notorious Joker malware is Chet Wisniewski, Principal Research Scientist at Sophos. Thanks for joining me, Chet. So first of all, what is Joker and what does it do? Well, Joker malware uh, is designed to create uh, revenue for the criminals by doing what we call SMS fraud. And so the idea there is the, the app, once it gets onto your mobile device, uh, tries to send text messages to premium rate numbers that will then show up later on your mobile phone bill uh, with a, you know with extra charges where that premium you know that premium rate money is some of it's being diverted to the criminals and so it's kind of hard to say what is it because of course it masquerades itself as something you want it doesn't say hey I'm malware I'm going to I'm going to do all these fraudulent things and charge uh, charge things to your mobile phone so clearly you know it's impersonating uh, instant messaging apps uh, fancy wallpapers uh, utilities that tell you things like Wi-Fi strength you know it's masquerading as things that you're probably searching for in the Google Play Store and might want to install on your device. That brings me to the next point. So how does it uh, entice people into uh, downloading it? You mentioned that it looks like uh, things that people want. How does it get into a position where, A, it's in the, the official Google Play Store in the, in the first place when it's uh, malware, and how does it uh, get people to download it? Because in some cases, these have been downloaded hundreds of thousands of times, uh, these malicious apps. And there must be some sort of way in which the attackers know how to game the system in order to encourage people to download it. Yeah, I think the reason we called out the Joker malware in, in this year's 2021 threat report is specifically because of how adept these criminals are at bypassing Google's checks. And, and it's a great question because um, you'd think, you know, if you like a legitimate app that is a flashlight app, which I still don't get the flashlight apps, because of course, every phone has had a flashlight <laughs> built into it for quite a long time now. But I guess there's strobing flashlights and fancy apps that people still like to play with. And you think like, how do you get to rank high enough when there's a bazillion of these types of apps in the Play Store? And, and we're not quite sure exactly on the social aspect of how they're gaming it. I suspect when we see that they have hundreds of thousands of downloads, for example, that maybe half of those downloads are fraudulent. And that's one of the ways they're boosting their rank is they're downloading their own app from uh, bogus or virtual devices that are making it look very popular to the ranking system that is used on these stores in order to, um, to display the kind of, uh, you know, the top 10 apps to you when you search for a given keyword. Uh, they clearly also are watching trends of what's popular at a, at a, at a given time. So, um, if there's a, a popular sporting event that's happening, perhaps people are looking for an app related to that. There may not already be something established. And this is a long uh, term thing that's been used for tricking search engines for, for years for uh, running malicious advertisements on the web, for example, which is you find something that there's no historical uh, knowledge of in the search engine, which means the search engine doesn't have any idea who's more authoritative than someone else. Like the search engines know who's authoritative at weather but they don't know who's authoritative at um, uh, you know, a given new political situation that's happening that's never happened before, perhaps when Crimea was seized by Russia. The search engine doesn't know who's an expert at that, which the criminals can rush into that very popular topic and, be, and try to convince the search engine that they're the, you know, the popular thing. Uh, as far as you know, how they're tricking Google's uh, security algorithms, um, it's rather um, uh, clever stuff. I mean, when, when you write uh, code for Android, uh, the historic way you write code is in Java and it gets com compiled down into a, what's called a byte code. Um, the, the criminals are avoiding using that for the malicious code because it's very easy to analyze. And, and ja um, Java, for people that are not programmers, can actually be disassembled and kind of turned back into source code quite easily. And so that uh, is to Google's advantage when they're analyzing applications to determine whether they're malicious. So these particular criminals are, are using some native C code uh, for the Android phones, which may be slightly less compatible with all phones that are available that run Android, but it allows them to more disguise the malicious nature of the code that they're trying to sneak past Google's uh, uh, security guards. It's interesting how they react to uh, trends, as you mentioned. It takes me back to a few years ago when Pokemon Go first came out. And initially, you could, I think you could only download it on iPhones. 
and there was a period where it wasn't available on Android. At least that was the situation here in the UK. But you checked the Android store for Pokemon Go, and there was a lot of different apps there claiming to be Pokemon Go, when it wasn't really the it wasn't available yet. And it just shows how uh, and that one that one example is from a few years ago. But it just shows how on the ball uh, these uh, these uh, I guess cyber criminals are They're almost market research agencies in themselves of examining what people want and trying to tailor uh, what they're hiding, uh, things like Joker in, in order to get the best possible return from it. Yeah, it's a true definition of a Trojan horse, isn't it, right? I mean, we, we saw that with Fortnite as well, where, you know, you had to go off market to get Fortnite, which meant there were tons of criminals that could Trojanize something and say it was Fortnite because they knew there was a lot of demand and there was no real uh, official way for some people to get you know, I mean, there is a, there was an official way, but the normal official way of going to the app store meant you had to disable all the security checks in order to go get and, and sideload it onto your device. And they, they certainly do embrace that. I don't know that Joker necessarily has um, uh, abused those particular brands, but it, it, this is a playbook that's, you know, well-trodden. I mean, we've seen this from other criminals over the years and, and Joker is sort of combining, uh, it's almost a little bit of a best of, you know, we've seen previous malware strains for Android and for other um, operating systems as well for Mac and Windows, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, abusing masquerading like that on the Pirate Bay, for example, where people are going to get stolen software, they'll trojanize, uh, you know, copies of Photoshop or video games or things like that, that people may be looking to download. Um, but what Joker seems to have uniquely done is sort of combine all these different tactics into sort of a best of combination of them all, right? They're, they're, they're using good disguises to get people to want to load it, they're using some of the more advanced ways to bypass the security checks that Google's doing in the background. Um, they're, uh, you know, able to kind of launder their money through the mobile phone companies by using these, these, you know, premium rate SMS numbers in order to gather the money rather than trying to, you know, uh, be a credit card merchant or something like that, where it may be easier to shut them down. So unfortunately it's, it seems to be a lot, rather long running thing. And, and it's difficult for consumers to, differentiate between you know the legitimate thing and the non-legitimate thing because uh, uh, they'll you know they'll make the publisher appear to be the same as the real publisher and just leave out a letter or add an extra letter or whatever is enough to convince Google's system to let them through but it's really hard for a human to, to notice that something's even wrong so um, that's the I think the real challenge and in, in, in trying to um, uh, protect people against it is it has to be done at a technical level rather than just giving people advice. And, and it's not, um, uh, when I see someone's a victim, I'm like, I totally understand how this happened to you, right? You didn't do anything wrong. This stuff shouldn't be there. It's on Google to do a better job at keeping this stuff out of the store. I suppose in one way, it's, it's kind of fortunate, if that's the right word, that Joker, its main goal is uh, making money. It's very prolific it's obviously very good at getting onto people's devices but things could be a lot worse if this is one of the types of mobile malware that's more intrusive because uh, there's all sorts of malware out there which steals uh, data photos uh, records your video can track your location uh, which is all of these things are reasons why um, cyber criminals and uh, hackers and some of which might be working for uh, very powerful bodies are looking at uh, s smartphones because, uh, as as referenced in the introduction, our entire lives are on these things, especially now. Yeah, it, it, it's true, and you know, I guess the it's it's a little solace to say that they're not doing any of those things, but of course, there's nothing stopping them. I mean, like all other malware, almost all other malware we see, it's able to bring down updates to itself. Um, which could mean bringing a friend, bringing some other kind of malware along with it to further monetize that victim for the criminal and, and allow some of that spying. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of things that try to steal mobile Bitcoin wallets, um, you know, obviously stealing credentials that may be stored, especially for banking institutions, uh, depending on which country you're in. Of course, that may or may not be effective, but um, th there's obviously plenty of, like you say, further nastiness out there that's... Um, uh, of interest and I think it's also if you're a very widespread infection if you can get a lot of devices even if you're not causing them active obvious harm where you can kind of lay dormant if you will that is very valuable to nation state actors and others like that as well because they're it allows them to hide amongst the criminal activity and again we're seeing that blending it's one of the sort of themes that's not 
directly called out in our threat report this year, but it's something that I've been talking publicly about because to me, that's what I read into the data that we've published this year, um, not just about mobile threats, but about threats in general, which is the nation states out there that want to spy on people, uh, especially in, in less free nations. Uh, they want to hide amongst the commercial malware so you don't know they're there. And the criminals are getting more and more sophisticated, so they're starting to look more and more like nation states. And so as those paths cross, it makes it very difficult to differentiate between a garden variety criminal and a spy. So with all of this going on, what are some of the things that users and businesses, I suppose, there's no business, have people using uh, smartphones as part of an enterprise device. Uh, what can uh, they do to help uh, stop themselves falling victim to uh, malware attacks on mobile devices? Well, the easiest thing for folks to do is to load some sort of uh, anti-malware software onto their mobile device. Uh, we provide free antivirus for Android that detects Joker and other families, as well as many uh, other reputable security vendors out there also have free or low cost um, apps for doing that. I think we need to put more pressure on Google. Ultimately, it's their responsibility to keep their Play Store clean. And um, while this stuff does happen to Apple as well, it's far less common on Apple's platform because Apple has human reviewers and Google relies on algorithms. And as long as Google's relying on an algorithm, there's always going to be a way to bypass and trick the computer into approving your code. And by not having that human layer, they're not uh, getting that extra level of security that, that Apple provides by having human reviewers. So um, I think you know, there's certainly some responsibility here for Google. For businesses, um, you know, in addition to having some sort of security software there, that's where you have to start deciding on policy. And this gets more complicated depending on whether you're allowing people to bring their own devices or not. Because certainly, if I'm bringing my own $1,000 smartphone to work, I'm of the opinion that you're not going to tell me how I'm going to use it. Um, you know, it's great that you're letting me access my company email and be productive. But if I bought the thing, I'm taking my own family photos and videos and I'm loading whatever apps I choose. And if I want to play Fortnite, you know, tough nuts. Um, and that's kind of my call. So I think companies really have to make a decision if they want to control this stuff, this, the sensible thing to do uh, is to lock down the phone with mobile security software to say, we're only going to allow you to use Outlook and uh, Salesforce or whatever your corporate apps are that you want people using their mobile device for to be productive. And that would obviously prevent um, any risk of third party apps from trying to manipulate or steal data from those sensitive apps. Uh, but that probably comes at the cost of you providing your employee a device and making it clear to that employee that while you may allow them to use it for personal things, we are going to limit your ability to play Fortnite. And if we want to remotely erase it because we're concerned about the security status of that device, we're going to do that. So if you're uncomfortable with that, perhaps you want to carry your own mobile phone. That's some really good advice, Chet. Uh, thanks for joining me on ZDNet Security Update to talk about uh, mobile malware threats. And of course, if there's, uh, there's more news and information on the latest mobile threats and how to protect yourself against them uh, on ZDNet.com. Thanks for watching.